Uh, Mr. Secretary, you're recognized. Again, thanks for being here. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Graves and Ranking Member Larson. And let me congratulate you as well on taking these well-deserved leadership roles since the last time I was uh, here before this committee. And also before starting, I want to take a moment just to send our heartfelt condolences to a member of this committee, Representative Mary Peltola, who lost her husband after a plane crash in Alaska last week. I know a lot of us have been in touch with her and our prayers are with her and with Jean's family and friends. Uh, to everybody on the committee, I want to thank you for the opportunity to testify today and for our ongoing partnership. The first time I came before this committee, we were making the case for an infrastructure package to address decades of underinvestment, deal with clear risks on our roles, roads, rails, and in our skies, and confront a pandemic that shook transportation in every way. The second year I testified here, the bipartisan infrastructure law was a reality, and we were fast at work standing up new programs and preparing to get much needed funding out the door. Today, I'm proud to report that the Biden administration has over 37,000 infrastructure projects moving forward in every state and territory. Through those projects, we are making Americans safer. We are creating jobs and addressing transportation inequities in big cities and on rural main streets. We are making our infrastructure more resilient against extreme weather while reducing the transportation emissions that are contributing to climate issues. And we're strengthening supply chains to keep goods moving and reduce prices. Let me highlight just a few recent examples. Last week, I was outside of Salem, South Dakota, where we are helping to repair 28 miles of I-90, which is a major freight corridor, and adding new truck parking, which we consistently hear from truckers is their top priority to improve the safety as well as the quality of that job. In July, I was at the Lehigh Valley Airport in Pennsylvania, where we celebrated an expansion and new security checkpoint to provide a faster, easier experience for travelers. And that was my first chance to be at a ribbon cutting on a project with funds from the bipartisan infrastructure law. And a few weeks ago, I was in northern Indiana, where we are helping to relocate a freight rail interchange that's going to improve a rail crossing. That's a problem for hundreds of kids getting to high school while supporting goods movement for the many manufacturers in that area and helping to improve the safe transport of hazardous material that sometimes passes through the community of Elkhart. Individually, every one of those projects is a big deal for its community. Collectively, they add up to a national undertaking that is giving American families, workers, and businesses the foundation to succeed well into this century. But I want to be clear-eyed about how much work remains on reducing roadway deaths, on making our rails and our skies safer, on strengthening public transit and helping it adapt to post-pandemic changes and more. That's why even as we keep full speed ahead to deliver good infrastructure projects, we also seek your further partnership in two critical areas. One, ensuring that our transportation safety work can continue by preventing a government shutdown. And two, delivering further improvements that are achievable only through legislation. To that end, I want to praise this committee for your leadership in advancing an FAA reauthorization bill that keeps the momentum for this important legislation. We're making good progress with the authorities we currently have. For example, we hit our goal for air traffic control hiring this year with a total of 2,600 ATCs now in training. We've helped airlines lower cancellation rates from their pandemic highs down to 1.6% this year, which is actually below 2019 rates. And we have a wave of new rules underway to protect passengers when flights are delayed or canceled and to get rid of junk fees for things like being seated next to your kids. But we're counting on an FAA reauthorization bill that ultimately passes to provide additional crucial authorities and resources needed to keep our airports and communities safe. And we ask Congress to get it to the president's desk. Meanwhile, America needs the same bipartisan leadership you have shown on aviation when it comes to rail safety. Freight rail safety legislation proposed by Democrats and Republicans together after the Norfolk Southern derailment in East Palestine has yet to advance. For the safety of thousands of communities that are host to rail lines, we need your help getting that legislation over the finish line. Again, the DOT is doing what we can. We have proposed requiring at least two crew members on trains and are right now working to finalize the rule establishing minimum crew member requirements. We're conducting more than 6,000 focused inspections on routes over which high hazard flammable trains travel. We're making the biggest investment in rail infrastructure in modern memory and more. But if America is going to see a day when 1,000 derailments a year is no longer just accepted as the cost of doing business, we need new authorities to better hold railroads accountable, which this legislation could provide. 
I believe the 2020s will be known not just for those early years when the pandemic upended transportation, but for the years we're entering now, where transportation gets safer, more affordable, and more efficient. With tens of thousands of projects underway, President Biden has begun literally laying the foundation for that. And with further partnership with Congress, we can maintain this new momentum and ensure that the transportation laws protecting Americans are modernized, just like the physical transportation infrastructure we all count on. Thank you again, and I'm looking forward to the questions.